guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about makeup that I'm thinking about panning in 2021. So I recently posted my December project pan update and in that video I was chatting a bit about what I might include in my 2021 project pan and I had a lot of requests to discuss that further. I also saw my friend Sarah Rose film a similar video recently where she walked you through some of her potential items for her next project. So I'll leave that link down below if you like this style of video. But today I'm going to be walking you through the items that you might slash probably will at one point see in a 2021 project pan. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, if you're watching this asking yourself, what is a project pan? If you have further questions about it, what it is, why to do it, why I love it. I have a full video about that where I go very in depth. So I'll leave that link down below in case you have questions. So I like to do my project pans rolling. So whenever I finish an item up, I typically replace it with something else. So I have a few products in every category to discuss today. Even if these don't make their way into my official 2021 project pan, I hope to make really great progress on them by the end of the year regardless. Many of these are kind of older in my collection. All right, so I only picked out one primer. This is the one I really wanna focus on. I'm pretty positive this is my oldest. This is from Glossier, it's their Priming Moisturizer. It's the rich version, they have the normal and then this one's supposed to be more hydrating. I've used up a very fair amount of this. I would say I don't have a ton left and I'm almost at the bottom, like I almost hit pan on it technically. This is a primer, you, could, you can use it as a moisturizer, which I have before, but it's very heavily fragranced, so it's not a product I will repurchase when I'm done with it, but I do like how intense it is, and I think it's really nice for me in the winter months when my skin is a bit more dry. It's definitely a hydrating base to start out with, especially if you're using more of a matte foundation. This will kind of help even that out if you have drier skin. I would be able to finish this up probably within a few months, so this... Out of everything in the video, this is the one like you'll probably see this in my 2021 project. Which, my update for my 2020 project, the finale for the year, will be going up as one of the last videos in 2020. And then one of the first videos in 2021 will be the introduction of the new one if you wanted a timeline. Okay, for foundation, I'm hoping I don't have to put this into a project because I'm hoping I finish it before the year is out, but I don't know. This is the Born This Way from Too Faced. I'm wearing it today. I've been wearing it so much recently because I'm trying to use it up. It's not even in a project pan, but I'm kind of panning it. I am right here. This one, you can actually see quite well how much is left. And that's one reason it's fun to pan because I can see the progress. I don't notice that to be the case with every foundation, but based on the formula and the packaging, it's obvious as it dips down. I don't know, can I finish this within the next few weeks? We'll see. I don't wanna just use this. I like that I've been still mixing in other foundations every once in a while, like the ones that I have in my current shop, my stash. So I don't want to completely neglect those just to get this out of my collection, but I'm hoping I can use it up. Okay, and then the sister foundation to that, another Too Faced foundation for me, this is the Peach Perfect. Pretty sure this is the oldest in my collection. Some might call it expired, but I don't think it smells weird. I mean, it's always smelled weird because it's scented like peaches, but I don't think the scent is alarming to me. The shelf life of this is 18 months, which is longer than most foundations. They're usually one year. This used to be my holy grail. My preferences have changed a bit where it's no longer my favorite foundation, but I do think it's a nice formula. I think it's being phased out though, which is definitely a sign to me that I should phase it out of my own collection too. I've heard that the new matte version of the Born This Way was kind of supposed to take its place. But I mean, look how little I have left. It's very, very narrow. Like I just have a tiny bit sitting at the bottom there. So would this be easy to use up? Probably, probably I could do this in maybe within a few months. Okay, one more foundation. I guess I'm feeling ambitious. I would say those two are my main goals to finish off. But if I still have time, I'd love to finish this one from e.l.f. I think this would be an easier one for me to finish because it doesn't come with a lot of product. It is less than a fluid ounce, which is standard. It's only 0.68. Also, e.l.f. says that the shelf life of this is only six months. And if that's the case, mine is expired for sure. Again, though, doing the smell test, everything seems fine. I haven't noticed any reaction on my skin. So I would like to use this up. I don't know how much I have in it. I think if I let it sit for a while like this, 
maybe it would show up. I'm assuming I've used probably more than half of this. I use it often. I really do like it. And when I'm selecting project pan items, I always try to pick products that I like. So I guess a little spoiler, I'm not going to be showing any palettes in this video. And I have had a lot of requests to talk about palettes that I might try to pan in the new year. And I've learned through project panning that that's not fun for me. I don't get excited to pan a palette. I don't feel inspired reaching for the exact same palette every single day. Even though with my project panning items, I never use them every single day, but I use them rather consistently. And for me, I prefer to rotate my palettes out more frequently than that. I think it gives me more inspiration when I'm doing my eyeshadow looks. So I never force myself to pan something that I know is not gonna be enjoyable for me. So I try to pick products and formulas that I already love and categories that I know I will like panning. Like, for example, in here, you're not gonna see a twist up bullet lipstick because I found that those just aren't fun for me to pan. And I never want project panning to be like a punishment, like, oh, you bought this, you have to use it up. No, it's, it's a way for me to continue to use up my products, but it should never not feel exciting. All right, just one concealer on my mind to pan next year, and that's the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting from Too Faced. So I had two shades of this, well, I guess technically three. I had two uh, con concealer shades and one bronzing shade. And throughout my 2020 project, I finished up one of the concealing shades, and now I have one more. This is the shade Almond, but I feel like a good test to how much you have left on the con in a concealer is the sound it makes when you open it. I put that right next to the mic, so hopefully you guys could hear it. Do you know what I mean? You can just hear that there's not a ton of product in there. I don't know how to explain it better than that, but I don't think there's a ton left here and I think I could pan it. However, what I learned panning the other one is that these take a long time to pan because there is so much product in here. This has the most product of any concealer I've ever found on the market. If you guys know of a concealer that gives you more product than this, let me know, but it's half a fluid ounce. Most, even like the Tarte Shape Tape is I believe around like 0 0.3, 0 0.32. That is still a lot compared to most concealers and this tops it by far. So if you're trying to pan this, just know it might take a little longer than most concealers do, but better value. Okay, only grabbed one powder to focus on. I could throughout the year decide to do more, but this is the one that stands out to me that I'd like to use up. And I actually hit pan on this today. I grabbed it today to kind of help soften the blend on my eyeshadow because I think this powder does that very well. And when I dipped in, I hit pan. So this is from Milani. It's their Prep, Set, and Glow Powder. The pan might be tricky to see on camera because it's such a little baby pan there. But I love this powder for finishing my makeup. I think it makes a wonderful finishing powder because it just blurs and diffuses product so well. So it is kind of translucent, but it has that blurring quality to it where if you have any patchy spots on your eyeshadow or your blush, your bronzer, doing a little layer of this over top is almost like a filter. It just kind of smooths everything out. It's lightweight, never looks heavy, so I think I would enjoy panning this. And I could even tell before today that the pan was starting to get quite thin because I've used this a lot. I mean, I can see the dip in it, so that plus the pan makes me think I'd be able to use this up probably within a few months. All right, I went overboard on blush. We'll see which one of these I end up working on, probably at least maybe two throughout the year, but I don't know if I'll get to all four that I'm about to share. First of all, the Cloud Paint from Glossier. Not my oldest, but quite old, and because it is a liquid, I'd like to use it up. And I mean, you can see the progress. There's a dip there, so I think I've already made pretty good progress on it. And I don't, I go through phases where I love liquid blushes. I'm not into them, I love them back and forth. But I think it might be nice to pan a liquid blush. I don't think I have had one in a pan before or in a project before. Oh no, I have. <sighs> The Benefit Benetint when I first went cruelty free like four years ago and was trying to use that up. Oh, that was not fun to pan. But I think this one will be, especially because sometimes you can layer. I could say, hey, let me start off with this, get a bit of initial color, and then I could top it with a light layer of a powder blush. I think I would enjoy panning that. And then my two oldest blushes. So this one has pan already. This is the Too Faced I Will Always Love You blush. I've got little baby pan in there. so. Maybe I could fully use this up. I would not have said that last year, but I've 
had really great progress using up blushes in my pan this year or my project so that might happen and then i'd really love to hit pan on this one from Lorac. i've had this for well over four years now but i haven't noticed again any change in the quality so i'm not too concerned but this is the shade Tinge, and I do like it for every day, so I don't think I would ever get bored of panning this. Those are the three I'm most likely to pick from, but I'm also considering my Hourglass blush. This is a mini in Mood Exposure, and I just feel like I don't reach for it a ton, so it might be a nice way for me to get some additional use out of it. So maybe in the later half of the year. All right, two highlights on my mind. Both of these, I can't believe I have not already hit pan in. And the first one is from Persona Cosmetics. It's the shade Zuma. Do you see the dip? Every time I use this, I think, okay, I'm gonna hit pan on it today because there's such a big dip and it just hasn't happened yet. My goal would not be to fully use the product up, but if I could see a pan in there, I think that would be a really great accomplishment. So that is probably gonna be in the project or this one from Pixie. This is another one. I'm shocked I don't have pan on it yet. This is their Glowy Gossamer Duo in Subtle Sunrise. And this shade right here has such a big dip in it. I really enjoy both of these formulas, so I do think I would like panning them. However, I wear a lot less highlighter these days than I used to, so I don't know how quickly I would be able to pan these. I think it would be a slower process than I've seen in the past with highlights. So I have said I do want to take my Milani bronzer out in 2021, take a bit of a break from it, and the one I will probably put in the project in its place is this one from e.l.f. This is their primer infused bronzer. I do really like this one. I mean, I can start to see the imprint of the rings in the bottom, so hopefully I'd be able to hit pan on this shortly. If I didn't go with this one, I'm also considering my take home the bronze bronzer. I think this could be nice to pan because I use this as a contour shade. So I would use this first and then go in with a bronzer. So I mean, I could even maybe work on both at the same time. But then kind of a wild card, this one from Wander Beauty, it's their Trip for Two Duo. It's got a blush and a bronzer. I have not used this that much. So I'm kind of debating putting it in the project just to play around with it some more. This is kind of my wild card. I think it would be fun to pan. I don't think I would see progress on it as fast as I would with this or some of the other blushes, but I'm actually really thinking about throwing this in just to get some more use out of the bronzer. I know I've seen Lauren May Beauty hit pan on this bronzer, so I know I could do it. And I feel like maybe if I use this more, I would start to enjoy it more, who knows? Sometimes that's nice with an item that I don't feel like I get a ton of use out of, when I put it in a project pan, then I kind of give myself permission to use it every day. I mean, not that I need permission. That's my makeup. I can use whatever I want whenever, but it's kind of that encouragement. And sometimes it allows me to fall in love with products that weren't really on my radar. The final possibility, this one I'm pretty confident I will throw in, is this lip gloss from Becca. I mean, hopefully it'll show up on camera how little I have left. This is the shade Rose Gold. I used to really love this formula and this color, but I don't use them as much anymore. So it would be nice to start playing around with it again. And I do think I would be able to finish it up semi quickly. I don't know though. I always say that with lip glosses and it never happens, but out of everything in my lip drawer when I was going through for this video, this was the one that popped out to me that I would most likely like to focus on in the new year. I'm curious if you guys have attempted to pan or have successfully panned anything that I talked about in today's video. Let me know down below uh, what you recommend, what you think would be nice to pan. Like I said, that finale is coming within the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!